In a career that has spanned over 50 years, Don Rickles has earned a reputation as one of our top funny men. He'll be appearing at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City at the end of May, and he's on the boards at Carnegie Hall in New York on the 12th of June, which I know is going to be a big night. Congratulations, Don, and happy 70th birthday, and thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Well, that's about it. No, that's not about it. Fact, and it's not 50 years. Give me a break. It's 40. I'm not, I'm not in the business 50 years. Listen, kids. Jolson was in the business 50 years, and he's not around. 70 years old. That's a milestone, huh? Congratulations on that. We're going to have services? No, we're not going to have services, but you know I like you a great deal, and I know you had a wonderful party, and all your friends were there, and I think it's terrific. Yeah, well, you were on the list, but it was touch and go. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Your it name, wasn't came, touch, up. Your it name came up, and I went, forget it. We don't need anything. You know, you know, it doesn't pick it up any. Anyway, it's great to be 70. Hey, it's how you feel. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I feel damn old, I swear to God. No, you don't. Do I you? get up in the morning and say, the leg's not moving. But I feel great. I feel great. You know what's interesting? I turned 60 the weekend that you turned 70. I don't feel 60, and I'm sure you don't feel 70. I think I'm about 25 years old. I mean, mm. I feel terrific, mm. and I still have But a you great... don't look good, Tom. I know I don't, Don. I don't have your genes. I'm going to lie to you. You don't look good. You've got to lay down. You've got to get a check. But like you have great enthusiasm for your work. You still get a charge out oh, of what sure. you do. Oh, sure. don't, you know, I don't get a yeah. kick out of running up and down the stage and wheezing and spitting up and <laughs> hanging out in the wings going, why, why does the family keep asking me for checks? <laughs> you know, the wife just sits there with the jewelry signaling ships. <laughs> anyway, so I gotta, I, I gotta be nice. And I mean, it's not easy, Tom. When you got a Jewish family, they're always there with, I'm not, I'm not waiting for the money. You know what I mean? I read about you in the papers now. They talk about Don Rickles' rebirth. Come on, you've, you, you've been on top now for 40 years. Yeah, I've been very lucky. Well, you know, I've, I've had my ups and downs, yeah. but right now, with Comedy Central, they made me the spokesman. I've read about that. You're doing commercials for Comedy Central. Yeah, and, it, and it's great. Because all the kids that might not know Don Rickles that well will be acquainted. And I just did a couple of spots with them already, and I'm very excited about it. And it should be, it should be great. And probably uh, I will skyrocket, and this show will be a mystery. Because I won't be here anymore. Too big. Stop too big. It. Too big. Stop it. Comedy Central. A lot of young comedians have places to work because of Comedy Central. When you were coming up, where could you go to work? There was no Comedy Store, Comedy Central, MTV, none of that stuff. No, I used to work in, uh, you know, places like the Melody Club when the girl came out with the little pasties and did Night Train. Ba-boom! Ba-boom! And the soup used to dance. The guy serving the soup used to, you know. And all the guys sat in the front and the, the boss knows they sat with his robe right in front of the bathroom, right in the front with the robe open. And uh, <laughs> I tried to concentrate on my work. <laughs> I thought it was a hunt or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> I kept seeing a sparrow looking around. You know? <laughs> it was, wasn't easy, you know? When you got a guy right in the front going, this kid's a funny guy. <laughs> and I'm doing, gee, there's a, there's a live sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody watches this show anyway, don't worry about it. <laughs> Every time you're here, once you get going, you're like a steam engine. You just go faster and faster and faster. Because I, mean, I want it to end. <laughs> well, it will. Oh, well, I know you'd say that. And, and you told me the last time in, in school, you were a shy guy. You, weren't an, you were not an extroverted kid. No, you? I was failing every subject in the world, you know, and, but I was the class clown, you know, president of the school, and the president uh, of, the, of the high school found out I was failing every subject, grabbed his chest, and told me to take a cab. <laughs> Lucky World War II came, because I'd still be in high school. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they said, would you like to join up? I was overseas already. And I kept saying to the Japanese, I have nothing against you. I do comedy. I do jokes. And, they, and the guy keeps saying, keep firing at the guys with the funny teeth. I said, you don't understand. I, I'm not a, I love, I buy all their toys. What do they want from me? You know what I mean? And, and they kept coming out of the jungle going, here's the Jew. Bang! You know, and I kept saying, don't do that. But they didn't listen. Were you funny as a kid in school? <laughs> oh, sure, it's a riot. And where did you get your stuff? Like when we were in school, the funny kids which wa would watch Milton Berle the night before, or they'd watch comedy on television, Jackie Gleason, and they would come in and do those routines in, in lunch hall. Where did you get funny stuff? Well, from? I think from my folks. My father yeah. was a wisecracker, and he was oh, yeah. a good guy, and he laughed. My, my mother didn't have my kind of sense of humor. You know, she was sort of a Jew Patton. <laughs> she, she just sat in the kitchen with a helmet going, get in here! <laughs> you know? And my father sat in his underwear in the living room going, Bleh. it was a nice family. <laughs> but, no, I'm kidding, my father was a classy guy. But uh, we, we uh, you know, I, I, I inherited that. I just, I was always that way. I used to make fun of my grandmother, make fun of people, pump people who were sick. I made fun of death. I made fun of everything. I make fun of this show because it is a funny show. You know. <laughs> well, not, we're not the funniest show in town, Don, but we are. Ah, you took a guess. <laughs> but, but we are the biggest joke, see? No, no yeah, it's a good show. And the high school plays that you did, that was, was that your entree to performing before? No, a no, way before people? that, way before that. When I was a kid, I used to, you know, 
I used to run around. I was the kind of guy, and you know, with, I was the one that always went to the, the, the synagogue dances, the church yeah, dances, yeah. and not too many church dances. But I went to the synagogue dances a lot. I didn't go to the church dances because they were all playing bingo, you know. Yeah. But whenever I went, I, I was always the guy that, that got everybody laughing but never got the girl, you know. And I was always driving the car, and they were in the back seat having a, a luau, you know. And I, <laughs> and I never got a shot at it, you know what I mean? So I was always the, the funny guy that never got the girl. But I used to go to the dance, and they'd send me, they, we'd all go in, and to get attention, and this took, and I was basically a shy guy. I'd get up on a table or a chair and go, uh, I go can I stand up? Sure you can. And i get up on a chair, I swear to God, I'd get up on a chair, and everybody's dancing, they're all dancing, I go, hold it, everybody! I'm leaving! And they go, what? Well, and people, people stared. They said, tell the matter with him. And that was my way of getting attention. Yeah, yeah. And then I struck out again. I always wound up with a waitress with a tooth that whistled. We, we went to, to the CYO dances, and it was the same thing. There were shy guys and extroverted guys. But growing up Catholic, we always wondered about stuff ab about being Catholic. Why, why couldn't you have meat on Friday? Mm. Or why did you have to not have water before you went to communion? Did you wonder about things that Jewish kids had to do because of religion ever? No, I paid no attention. I phoned God. I, I didn't. You, you guys got up in the morning and went, <laughs> looking for a wafer. We didn't do that. We phoned the rabbi, give him a couple of hundred, and he does what we want, you know. But we, I never had that problem. We, we were very, you, you, you woke up with a nun, you know, every morning going, Tom, sit, dance, boom. Right. We didn't have that. Rabbi just sat there and said, how's the family? He said, here, rabbi, here's a couple of hundred, don't bother me. <laughs> Fantastic. That's the way I was raised. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Take your time. This is your show. Don't go to pieces. No, no, I won't. I just want to try something else. Okay. Now. Okay. You went to the to the Dramatic Academy in New York and you studied acting and you right. were an actor and all right. of it. But but somewhere along the line you made the transition to comedy. When did that start? When you decided you know? When I couldn't get work. Oh really? <laughs> yes. It started very early. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I've mentioned this I think before to you. And I went there with Jason Robot, right. a fine actor, and and Bancroft and a lot of good people at that time and. Uh, and you were good there, I hear. Yeah, well, hey, I graduated. They, That's right. They, I, they even wrote me a letter because we went through a whole thing that I, they said they never publicized that I went to the American Academy, you know, because when you come from the nightclub world, it's like, forget about it. You know, right. they don't want to talk about it. Right. It's not because they're trying to be indifferent, but it's a, the saloon to the, to the artsy world, you know. Yeah. So I, I went to the Academy, and I graduated, and I walked around Broadway, and I read for Stalic 17, and I read for uh, Mr. Roberts, and I read for a lot of shows, and I never got a job. So I used to go to the Lower State and sit in the balcony and watch a movie. And uh, my father would say, where were you? Oh, all day long, up and down Broadway. And I was in the back of them. Then I was an usher in a movie. I did all kinds of odd jobs, like me and other guys. And I never could get to, uh, to Broadway, you know. Yeah. So suddenly, I, I was always kidding around. So I went to a dance. A guy gave me $5. Then a guy gave me $10. Then $20. And today, I'm up to 50 bucks. So yeah, I'm, right, I'm set. Right. We are with Don Rickles, who later on this month will be appearing at the uh, Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. And then on June 12th, he's on stage at Carnegie Hall in New York, which we'll hear about in just a second. We'll be right back after these messages. Is it? With Don Rickles, and here uh, is Lawrence in Montreal, Quebec. Hi, and welcome to CBS, Larry. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How did you know they call me Larry? Well, I just guessed. You're keeping tabs on me, aren't you? Yeah, I'm watching you, Larry. Good. Listen, Tom, first of all, I want to I wanna ask you, what the heck is a color teeny? It's a martini that you have when you're watching a color television. It's just a dumb, stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now okay. my question for, for Don Rickles. Don, first of all, I love you. Thank you very much. I love you, too. Okay, let's I've let's have lunch. I've appreciated your, your work for many years. Thank you. And I truly do love you. Thank but you. I wanted to ask you, Don, what is, first of all, what is your favorite insult, and how the heck do you manage to keep an audience on your side when you insult them? Well, the whole idea is, the whole idea is you, you got to let them know it's a joke. That's, that's the first thing. Right. Otherwise, uh, the paramedics are going to give me mouth to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's just a, a, it's a style and a way of making people enjoy you. And it's not like insult. People say insult. To me, it's a big rib. But I've always been tagged with the word insult, so I go along with it. After 35 years and more, it's done me, done me very well. It put me in good stead. So that's the way it goes. But it's your personality, and they come to see that, and they enjoy it, and I enjoy doing it. I think they appreciate the fact that you have guts, too. Well, I don't know about guts, but I have a lot of Blue Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Don. I love you. Okay. Good luck. See you in Ottawa. Okay. okay. Good night, right. Lawrence. <laughs> My favorite place, Ottawa. <laughs>
go up there for the Mountie Convention. Montreal, Montreal. Huh? He's in Montreal. He's in Montreal. Mont Montreal. Who cares? I what know. do I care? <laughs> I live in America. I don't go to Canada. Well, you might have to go there someday. I'll buy a sled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, there was a shoot time. A hunting dog away. Well, after after you got hot in the clubs and Sinatra saw you and became a fan and Dean Martin and Sammy Davis. Mm. Yet the producers for television said Rickles is too hot for television. Mm. And along came an appearance on the Johnny Carson show in the 1960s. He was the man. Uh -huh. Johnny Carson did it. He really did. And followed by Dean Martin, rest his soul. And Dean later put me on the variety end. But Johnny was the first guy in New York said, we've got to take a chance with this guy. They said, take a chance. He said, no, 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 he's funny. I, I want him But on. why was there that feeling, do you think, that, they, that if they took Rickles, they were taking a chance? What was well, the risk? In, well, because in those days, it was outrageous. You know, today, I could work the Vatican compared to what's going on. You know, <laughs> nothing personal. I know how sensitive you are about <laughs> No, I'm that. not sensitive at all. <laughs> Forgive me. No, if you have a ring, I'd kiss it, but, you know. Uh, I have something else you could kiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You and I are laughing, and the people out there in America are going, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> but I got to tell you, uh, as, as far as uh, what we were talking about. Uh, it, about uh, the, the risk that Don Rickles represented on television. Yeah, well, it was outrageous. You know, I, I made fun of ethnic backgrounds and exaggerated it, right. made fun of people, in front of the blacks, in front of the Jews, in front of the Catholic, whatever. Irish, French, I hate to use the word Catholic, like Catholic, Irish, whatever. <laughs> And I made fun of people, and that was unheard of in those days. And what I did was, just making fun, is which I still do to this day, exaggerate all our insecurities. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm a joke teller. I never was a joke teller. I tell th things, you know, like I say, Tom, the suit you have on, I'm a friend. Yeah. You, now, are, you are a verbal caricaturist, is what you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take it back. Right, okay. right away, he's got to come out with the college crap. <laughs> Verbal comic lab is said. All right, and then Greg Gear or Greg uh, Garrison, Greg was a good put friend. you on the Dean Martin yes, show and said, did. "Don't script on. Let him ad lib." That's right. They put a whole audience. Bob Hope, the big joke at that time. Bob Hope came late. Uh, he, he had a, a, a ton of stars. Uh, Bob Newhart was included. He begged, and. Uh, they had all these stars in there, and Bob, knew, uh, Bob, Bob Hope came in late. And I turned around and I said, at that time, uh, the uh, Korean War was on. Vietnam War. Vietnam War. I know, I can't keep up with the wars. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm so busy down in the White House down below in the uh, strategy room trying to figure out which war it is. I don't know what the hell that means, but you're staring at me like you understand it. So uh, no, anyway, so but Bob Hope, Bob Hope, <laughs> you're just sitting there. No, I'm you're watching, a big I, help, too. I, I'm watching really? him. Well, I tried and got the remark about we'll see how this goes, so yeah. I'm not coming over there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Bob Hope came so in, Hope and, I turned around, in. And, I turned around and I turned around and I said the, the, the line, I said, is the war over? And at that time, it was a big thing, and everybody laughed and fell down, and Bob Hope did a great thing. He stood up and unfolded the American flag and marched around the room for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and like a dumbbell, I followed him. <laughs> right, Bob, right, Bob. <laughs> have you ever met Bob Hope? Yes, I have. Oh, great. Uh, Debbie in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Is this Hi, a shoe and welcome to CBS. It's Hello. A shoe convention. All of a sudden. Hi. Hi, Hi. Tom. Hi, Don. Hi. Well, I was just wondering, has anyone in your audience or elsewhere ever been able to out heckle you? Well, dear, the the show is not a contest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't come to see Don Reels go, "Okay, Joe, get it rolling." You know, it's not it's not like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe in your neighborhood, but I, I don't do that. I come out and do my performance, and if they heckle, I have friends with me who hurt you. <laughs> One his name is Rocco Bonzuno, and the other guy is Aldo Ganano. Newhart has told stories of handling hecklers. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Did somebody hit her? No, I. Oh. <laughs> no. Suddenly, was, <laughs> have you had a situation where you've had somebody in the audience who maybe had had too much to drink and it was difficult to handle? No, in my beginnings, my beginnings, every comedian had that in, in the rough places I worked. Okay. But uh, as time went on, the more uh, the more uh, a name you became and the more prestigious uh, the places you worked. That doesn't happen. Okay. I mean, you can have anything happen in the finest. It can happen in church uh, of or synagogue. I mean, so those things can happen, but it, it's, it's a rare but thing. But is there something, does. is there a routine that comedians have that you develop that if somebody is heckling you? I don't have a set thing. I really don't. Okay, okay. You know, I really don't. Like, if you annoy me, I leave. Oh, I understand yeah. that, because you have on so many occasions. Yeah, right. Debbie, did you have any other questions for Don? Oh, not much else, but I just wondered if he's ever been at a loss for words. <laughs> yes. Once when my father said he was cutting off the money. <laughs> I had a massive, massive, massive. Thanks for calling, Debbie, and thanks for dotting us up tonight.
Thank you. All Thanks, right. Debbie. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. We will continue with Don Rickles, who will be appearing at the end of this month at the uh, Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City and on the 12th of June at uh, Carnegie Hall, which we'll find out about after this short break. good movies have you seen this year, besides the ones that you were in, Toy Story? Well, that's and, about it, Casino. No, cause... Oh, I haven't seen it, but a uh, lovely girl, the Twister. Uh, yeah, uh, Helen, Helen Hunt. Hel she's, I met her and her boyfriend, Hank, uh, uh, you know, the, the kid in Bye-bye uh, Birdie, Birdcage. Birdcage. Yeah, and uh, Hank, and uh, she's a lovely girl, and, she, and I'm very happy. That, that picture's a big picture, but... As far as I, Dead Men Walking was, was very good. Did you go to Fargo by any chance? Fargo was great. Isn't that a great yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, don't yeah. like your police work. Yeah, they couldn't <laughs> solve the case, but yeah, 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 yeah. And then, you know who was here one night was Alan Alda, who did this thing, Flirting with Disaster, that was absolutely an hysterical picture. You and Barbara would love that picture. It's very, very really? funny. Really? Yeah. I have yeah. to see it. Yeah. By the way, at Carnegie Hall, you were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, Rita Rudner is going to be on the show with me. Very I'm good. delighted. She's a wonderful, Oh, no, she's, she's a pal of mine. Oh, is she? Yeah, she, she used to date a guy that bought my house back east when I left there. Really? Yeah, and she told me stories about eating Tom Snyder's cornflakes and drinking Tom Snyder's milk and uh, sleeping in Tom Snyder's bed. And that's like, exciting. Yeah, well, it was then for me. Yeah, it's great. Chris, you're, not a, you're not a very generous guy, Don. Christina in Norfolk, Virginia. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good evening, Hi, Christina. Hi, Virginia. Christina. Norfolk, Christina. Virginia. Why is she going to make a stink? She's on the phone. <laughs> I, I try, to, try to stay with this, Let Don. the woman's talk. Don, huh? Don, we're not going that fast, honey. Just try to stay with it. Gee Don. whiz, give her a break. I, I was in Norfolk in the Navy. <laughs> a lot of luck. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hi, I wanted to ask you, in this age of political correctness, do you feel any pressure to turn down your racial humor? No, no, I, I, I do what I do, and it's, as I said, if you last 35 years and more as I have, i got to be doing it right, otherwise I wouldn't be on Tom Snyder's show. I'd be dickering with somebody big. But, uh, oh, you know, in the meantime, I'm on this. So, uh, no, it's done well for me, and I don't even think about politically incorrect or correct or what have you. I just do my thing, and hopefully people like yourself will continue to laugh. Well, I love you. I think you're great. I love you too, dear, and I'll give you a call. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. Good, good night, Bye -bye. Christina. Good night, Christina. I asked you in the Sleep break well. about, uh, about Carnegie Hall, yeah. and you said to me... Uh, well, tell the places you've played. You've played some great venues, Radio City Music Hall. Radio City Music Well, Carnegie Hall, I'm amazed that I'm there because I don't even play the violin. And uh, <laughs> i I, I got to tell you, that, that should be very exciting. Alan King is going to host it, and uh, uh, I thought I'd bring up. He was in Casino with me, and he keeps saying, mention me. And so uh, I, <laughs> he's going he's gonna to host the thing, and Toyota is sponsoring it along with Comedy Central. So it should be a, a heck of a night. And I'm very, Radio City was great. It was with Frank Sinatra, although Frank sure. was on too long. Uh, <laughs> I told him that, and now I got an aunt in the Bronx that I, don't, I can't find. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I tell those things to Frank, and he's cute. He twists my leg, and now it's funny, you know. <laughs> I call up Jerry Lewis, and it's better. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> jump in if you think of anything. And so uh, I wouldn't dream of it, oh, pal. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I find that all these jobs, at Copa, the Elegant in Brooklyn was a stepping stone to New yeah, York. Yeah, but Carnegie St. Pete's Basilica, well, you know, yeah. it's, it's big. It it's, really is. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about what it. What is the difference in performing uh, in Las Vegas and Atlantic City as a performer? Is there, as a gambler, it's totally different, as you know, but as a performer, what's the difference? I don't that? find it different. Really? I find the people that come to gamble come from all over the country. You know, they come to Vegas, they come to Atlantic City. Uh, you get the, the Midwest people, but now they, they go by, it's coast to coast. Right. And so with me, the audiences don't change. I went down to Memphis, Tennessee, and Biloxi, Mississippi with Joan Rivers, who, by the way, is a great gal. Anyway, and Joan and I, we worked down there, and I thought I was going to run into a wall. I thought, you know, Billy Bob was going to come out riding, you know, <laughs> Billy Bob coming out of shoot nine riding shot at Joe, Joe, you know. And that was going on. But uh, <laughs> I walked out, and that audience was terrific. Those mm -hmm. people were, were great, you know. They kept yelling, yeah, you know, throwing grits on the tux. But, hey, you can't have it all. The difference to me when I used to gamble in Atlantic City uh, versus Vegas, Atlantic City, they're, they're playing with rent money. You know, they, they get yeah. the paycheck on Friday. Yeah. It, uh, that's, that's true. It, whereas in Vegas, they're 2,500 miles away from home, and yeah. they're there to have a vacation, so yeah. if they lose a little money, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Here, uh, and I know it's too in Vegas. They've got a lot of kids sliding around the casinos now. You know how they do it at a dance or a wedding? Yeah. Kids are sliding on the floors now. They've got kids all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Su Suzanne in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, welcome to CBS. Hi. 
Don, my son, John Bradbury, was in sixth grade with your son, Red, at John Thomas Dye School many years ago, and I wondered what Red's doing these days. Red, he hasn't been called that since he's a kid. I don't, Was that uh, your son? They were yeah, kids my son. Yeah, right. His, his, my son Larry is a very, I'm very happy for him. He's a writer now, and he's writing scripts, and uh, hopefully he'll, uh, he'll get real lucky with a, with a good one. He, he's written some good stuff, and uh, he's got an agent, and he's doing very well, and I'm very proud of him. Well, and, good for him. He was always a nice kid. Well, thanks so much. And why Thank did they call him Red when he was a kid? Because he had red, red hair. Red hair, I'm sorry. Dumb? I'm, uh, <laughs> I hate that. Don't be dumb. When you hear the bell, go to history. <laughs> I can't believe that. Why did they call him Red? I don't... Jeez. Of course, he had blue hair. <laughs> Suzanne, I'm glad you called. Diana Thanks. Crew is throwing up on the camera. I can't believe what you just said. Thanks. I'll tell Red you asked for him, dear. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. When Newhart was here, he talked about the times We when... have to bring him up. Uh, I don't have to, but no, I want to. I know, kidding. I know. Have you ever had a, a tough night on stage where it just didn't work? Have you bombed ever? Well, if I did bomb, I have a great attitude. I've never in my career said I was wrong. In fact, I say a joke on the stage. When an audience doesn't respond to something, which is not too often, thank God, but when it happens, mm -hmm. I always say, hey, everything I do on the stage, I did up in my room, and I laughed my you-know-what off. <laughs> so I know it's funny. Uh -huh. So I've never given the audience the satisfaction of saying, hey, bomb. That expression came a long time ago in comedians when they were first starting out, and it was like dead silence or or things were tough, or the audience was restless. And I've had, I've had audiences over my career, sure, sure, that weren't the best, but they, I never let them know it. Gotcha, I, I don't know gotcha. if I'm explaining it right. Yeah, no, I, are, I let are. them know that they're not getting it. I got it, but they're not getting gotcha, it. Gotcha, gotcha. You know who was great making bad material look good was Johnny. The best. Yeah. Remember Johnny? Well, his takes, yeah. I remember him. I spoke to him the other night, and he wanted to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> He's off the air 20 minutes, and the man's borrowing already. <laughs> Anyway, I, I can say that because he don't stay up this late to watch this. He, you know, he knows you're not going anywhere. So uh, uh, I used to, I used to, I used to do that. I used to kid around, and he was the, he was the best. Yeah. He'd set you up, you know, like you do. You're, you're great at that, yeah, Tom. Right. You really are. I'm, I, this is straight. Yeah, right. You, you got to have a guy lead you into things. You just can't sit here in a chair and ha 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 ha, you know, like a robot. And Johnny was great. He knew when to lay back and he knew when to destroy you. And that was his gift in life to destroy me. <laughs> May you never have silence in the seats or a restless audience. Thanks for being a pal and knock them dead at Carnegie and at the Taj Mahal back in Atlantic City at the end of this month. Thanks so much. And by the way, I'll, I'm also going to be at the Tropicana in August, so if we can go with the calendar that far in advance, it's great. This crowd can't remember. Vegas. They can't think that far ahead. Hey, Tom, may I just say, before sure. I leave you, you are a decent human being and a wonderful guy that, because over the years you've treated me first car, and I appreciate it. <laughs> After all this abuse, I'm now... <laughs> You're waiting for a bomb to go off. I'll tell you the truth. It already I has. don't like you. I've never liked you. This show stinks. And get off. Okay? Do you feel better now? Back with, uh, back with Jeffrey Tambor. Our thanks to Don Rickles will continue after these messages. You stinker, you. <laughs>